Okay, so lesson 161 of A Course in Miracles. Okay, uh, give me your blessing, Holy Son of God. Today we practice differently and take a stand against our anger, that our fears may disappear and offer room to love. Here is salvation in the simple words in which we practice with today's idea. Here is the answer to temptation, which can never fail to welcome in the Christ, where fear and anger had prevailed before. Here is atonement made complete, the world passed safely by, and heaven now restored. I like, uh, just, I wanted to quickly comment on that. Here is atonement, you know, atonement for me is at one moment. I'm no longer in separation. Here is uh, oneness made complete. The world passed safely by. And, you know, this thing of transitory things and hooking into the transitory as the truth. Um, you know, for me, when all that, all that, that is transitory is passed safely by, I'll be restored to the heavenly peace within. So here is the answer of the voice for God. Complete abstraction is the natural condition of the mind, but part of it is now unnatural. It does not look on everything as one. It sees instead but fragments of the whole, for only thus could it invent the partial world you see. The purpose of all seeing is to show you what you wish to see. All hearing but brings to your mind the sounds it wants to hear. For me, this is just talking about how when I'm in ego, I'm just seeing and hearing selectively all my own belief systems and my karma out there in the world. It's like I'm suffering my own internal, um, my own internal belief systems. Thus were specifics made. And now it is specifics we must use in practicing. We give them to the Holy Spirit, that he may employ them for a purpose which is different from the one we gave to them. Yet he can use but what we made to teach us from a different point of view, so we can see a different use in everything. One brother is all brothers. Every mind contains all minds, for every mind is one. So this, for me, is just reflecting the different levels of consciousness. So when I'm in identifying with my own story and my own body, then I, I, I experience myself in separation and I project that other people are in separation from me. So my experience is I'm separated from others. But when I dissolve, when I no longer identify with my, the thoughts in my head and my body, then I start to experience a unity and a oneness with, 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 with everything, which is beyond separation. So I'll carry on. So yet do these thoughts make clear the meaning of creation? Do these words bring perfect clarity with them to you? What can they seem to be but empty sounds? Pretty perhaps, correct in sentiment, yet fundamentally not understood nor understandable. The mind that taught itself to think specifically can no longer grasp uh, abstraction in the sense that it is all-encompassing. We need to see a little that we learn a lot. It seems to be the body that we feel limits our freedom, makes us suffer, and at last puts out our life. I really like this, um, and I really do like the Course in its strong emphasis that I'm not a body. I'm free, for I am as God created me. So I just repeat this again. It seems to be the body that we feel limits our freedom. So if I'm experiencing my body in any way, you know, the, you know that I have a body, that I am a body, the suffering in the body, then that will mean that I feel limited. I do not feel infinitely strong, infinitely at peace, with an infinite power source, I'd feel limited to the fragility and the temporary nature of my body and everything that goes on in it. Just carrying on now, yet bodies are but symbols for a concrete form of fear. I think the, the Course does sort of um, suggest that, you know, the body is, is, you know, one of the major sources of fear. Because if I'm identified with myself as being a body, then, um, you know, there's going to be an unconscious fear of my body dying. 
and and uh, if I'm attached to other bodies there'll be an unconscious fear of those bodies dying. So fear without symbols calls for no response for symbols c can stand for the meaningless and this I really uh, really like and one of my favorite lessons from A Course in Miracles is that all my thoughts are meaningless and the Course uh, teaches me to look around the room and to say every object uh, in this room is meaningless. So in this way I'm stripping all the projections. My body is totally meaningless. It has no more meaning than the table lamp and uh, the other bodies in this room are just as meaningless um, as the table in front of me. So as I strip the meaning out of everything, that one thing is not more valuable than another thing, uh, then I stopped, I stopped to make up stories about the, the, the more important objects and the less important objects, and my head becomes clear of thoughts. My ego doesn't have to be analysing what's better and what's worse would be in the future or the past. I'm restored to these states of the infinite. Um, Okay, so I'll just read that. Fear without symbols calls for no response, for symbols can stand for the meaningless. Love needs no symbols being true. This is, uh, I like this, I just want to make a comment on this. Love needs no symbols being true. For me, the absolute true love is uh, infinite love, or non-dualistic love, or love without attachments, or, or love without projections. So I'm not in these things of there's a me loving a you or I'm in suffering or you're in suffering. I'm now free of these symbolic projections and I'm now, um, if you like, immersed in the infinite love uh, which, is, uh, which provides holy vision. But fear, at, fear attaches to specifics being false. So carrying on reading, uh, bodies attack but minds do not. This thought is surely reminiscent of our text, where it is often emphasised. This is the reason bodies easily become fear symbols. You have many times been urged to look beyond the body, for its sight presents the symbol of love's enemy. Christ's vision does not see. The body is the target for attack, for no one thinks he hates a mind. Yet what but mind directs uh, the body to attack? What else could be the seat of fear except what thinks of fear? Hate is specific. There must be a thing to be attacked. An enemy must be perceived in such a form he can be touched and seen and heard and ultimately killed. So here for me the Course is just really talking about how our dualistic minds create duality and separation. So anything in, the world, in this world is an object or is a form or something transitory. And if, if my uh, experience is that I'm a transitory thing of form, then I project other things of form. And hence the notion of attack and being attacked can, can start. So when hatred rests upon a thing, it calls for death. As surely as God's voice proclaims, there is no death. Fear is insatiable consuming everything its eyes behold, seeing itself in everything, compelled to turn upon itself and to destroy. Who sees a brother as a body sees him as fear's symbol, and he will attack, because what he beholds is his own fear external to himself, poised to attack and howling to unite with him again. Mistake not the intensity of rage, uh, projected fear must, sorry I'll read that again, mistake not the intensity of rage projected fear must spawn. It shrieks in wrath and claws the air in frantic hope. It can reach to its maker and devour him. Thus do the body's eyes behold in one whom heaven cherishes, the angels love and God created perfect. This is his reality. And in Christ's vision is his loveliness reflected in a form so holy and so beautiful that he could scarce refrain from kneeling at his feet. Yet you will take his hand instead, for you are like him in the sight that sees him thus. Attack on him is enemy to you, for you will not perceive that in his hands is your salvation. 
Ask him but for this, and he will give it to you. Ask him not to symbolize your fear. Would you request that love destroy itself? Or would you have it be revealed to you and set you free? Today we practice in a form we have attempted earlier. Your readiness is closer now, and you will come today nearer Christ's vision. If you are intent on reaching it, you will succeed today. And once you have succeeded, you will not be willing to accept the witnesses your body's eyes call forth. What you see, sorry, what you will see will sing to you of ancient melodies you will remember. You are not forgot in heaven. Would you not remember it? Okay, so now it's saying, select one brother, symbol of the rest, and ask that salvation of him. See him first as clearly as you can, in that same form to which you are accustomed. See his face, his hands and feet, his clothings. Watch his smile and see familiar gestures which he makes so frequently. Then think of this. What you are seeing now conceals from you the sight of one who can forgive you all your sins, whose sacred hands can take away the nails which pierce your own and lift the crown of thorns which you have placed upon your bleeding head. Ask this of him that he may set you free. Give me your blessing, Holy Son of God. I would behold you with the eyes of Christ and see my perfect sinlessness in you. And he will answer whom you called upon, for he will hear the voice for God in you and answer in your own. Behold him now, whom you have seen as merely flesh and bone, and recognize that Christ has come to you. Today's idea is your safe escape from anger and from fear. Be sure you use it instantly should you be tempted to attack a brother and perceive in him the symbols of your fear and you will see him suddenly transformed from enemy to saviour, from the devil into Christ. Okay, I'll stop the video there.